Hey everybody, it's Ryan and Hannah. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We are down in Boonville, Missouri today at AgriSpray Drones. We are here for their free training that they offer through the link in our description when you get a quote from them. Um, you can actually come down after you buy a drone and they'll run you through the basics of these large spraying drones. So uh, we, bought our, we bought our drone a couple weeks ago, got it last week and I've been getting accustomed to it. But I really feel like going through the training would be a good thing for me just so that I'm fully accustomed to the drone and uh, I'm fully aware of like all the features and capabilities of the drones, the drones themselves rather than learning um, just by uh, really the hard way of you know kind of doing it myself as I go. Um, where mistakes could be more often made and when you're using drones like these that are a lot more expensive, they're very large. Um, they can possibly be dangerous if used in an improper manner. Uh, I really feel that hopefully they can offer some insight that I'm looking forward to sharing parts of with you guys in this video. So last month, Andrew and I actually came down and we received a tour of AgriSpray. And um, they're going to be giving us another tour this morning. Uh, Andrew actually came down last month and we dropped off a couple drones and he picked up a couple to take back with us as well since he's our local agar spray dealer and um, it's really cool to see the facility that they've got um, their tech room that they've got where they work on the drones um, they have very good very fast service uh, as Andrew's learned and um, I'm looking forward to working with them going forward so Hannah and I are gonna go in for the training um, Hannah's actually been talking about getting her part 107 as well um, since we are getting this drone I'm not drawing out the possibility of doing commercial spraying um, and then that way there's more than one of us that could, could be doing it and that frees up some more time for me and gives you thing, to yeah, things to do as well that you know would save me a lot of time. So what do you say we uh, head on into agar spray and see what they've got to teach us. All of our drones, uh, everything that we carry here at Agri-Spray Drones, we have you know, our T T40s. We'll have our T50s very soon. Uh, T20P, T25s, DJI Flycart 30, um, all their accessories. So the spreader tanks, the chargers, the batteries, cooling stations, extension cables for the cooling stations, the atomizer, uh, atomized sprinkler package. So you can have the four nozzles on the T50 or the T25, we have some of those here. Um, it's actually really cool, uh, gets a lot of problems out of it fast. Uh, yeah, we did set one up and it was really cool, but we have our DJI Flycart 30s here. We have the winch system for them. Then we also have their batteries. And then down here, we have a new product. We're the only distributor uh, in the United States right now for this product, uh, and it's called Cool FX. And it's a heat resistant, uh, like shade paint that you can spray on top of like livestock barns or industrial buildings or anything that you want to keep the internal temperature cooler and um, we actually put it on here and we did some livestock uh, pig barns last week really? and the roof was 130 degrees where it was treated and around like 90 degrees 80 degrees where we did treat so it keeps the temperature inside the building significantly cooler and uh, Trey actually went out and kind of like followed up with them and they said they used to not be able to put their hand by the ceiling because of how hot it was. It would start burning your hand before you could even touch it. And now they can basically almost touch it and hold their hand there. Uh, Taylor, like the little bit, we sprayed like the center of our building and we put seven buckets on. And I think it took us around like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And <laughs> um, we have a video on YouTube like showing that whole process right now, actually. So. How many T50 props did you see you had coming? Uh, we have 1,500 sets of each direction, nice. and we will probably be buying more very, very soon, get coming as well. So. And that's been a big thing for me working with AgriSpray. There's been times that AgriSpray has been the only company with propellers yep. in the country. Yep. So, yeah, nice. that's something you know we really pride ourselves on is our after sale support, um, parts support, technical support, and that's something that you know. We've continued to grow and grow and grow, and that's that's something that will continue to grow as there's more drones in the market. You know, we'll we'll build up more parts inventory so that we can service anybody and everybody that needs them. Yeah, I'm gonna say we have around like 80 T40s right now, okay. somewhere in there. Yeah, a little bit of an information overload at times, but at least you get a idea of what's going on, and then 
you know, when a customer gets a draw, at least around Wisconsin where I'm working, um, I always like following up with them, mm -hmm. you know, about two weeks after they've had a little, little time to fly, they're going to have more questions. Um, and it's nice to be able to observe what they're doing. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we'll catch, you know, Hey, um, like return to home, you know, start flying that thing manually a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. you'll save on your efficiency or we'll see ways that they can spend less time on the ground, more time in the air. And, um, and that does come from experience. And yeah. Um, I, when I started flying basically sprayer drones when they first came out, I was, you know, scrambling a little bit, you know, I was, I, I, you know, I probably spent a year of time just flying, just learning the stuff. Whereas now, you know, I mean, it's nice to be able to share that experience with customers and, mm -hmm. and let them get off to a much faster start. Yeah. My name is Taylor. I'm the owner of Acro Spray Drones. What we are going to teach today um, are some of the, the basics, uh, the software, uh, the hardware, um, answer some of these questions where we're looking at different types of scenarios. DJI, if you don't know, is, uh, is the maker of this drone. Uh, they also make a lot of the other small drones and they have, I don't know, 70% of the global market share. Uh, it might even be higher here in the U.S. You just want to try to try to twist your motor back and forth and try to twist this back and forth. If you notice any movement there where the motor is going to mount basically to the arm on that bracket, uh, that's a problem. So check that. When you get through the arm, obviously you want to make sure there's no cracks in your carbon fiber. Uh, if there's a small hairline crack, that can that can cause a collapse. Uh, but if the lungs don't crash, there should be a hair, there should be a crack. Check. Water, your liquid goes in the center of that disc, underneath this bowl right here from the tube, underneath the bowl, center of the disc. Uh, as the disc spins, centrifugal force throws that water out, and there are channels grooves, just like this one here, grooves on the underside of this disc where that water gets trapped in the grooves and gets cut up like a knife basically chopping water at high speed. Uh, and that is what creates the droplet. Uh, is, is that it, piece spinning? This piece right here is spinning. Okay. So what, what changes, what creates your droplets is the struggle force and the, the grooves and the little ridges uh, in this disc. What changes your droplet size is RPM of this disc. If this disc is spinning slowly, that creates a larger droplet. If it's spinning fast, that creates a smaller droplet. So you can range your droplets anywhere from 50 microns to 500 microns. Where you've got air that's going through your props, obviously, pushing down to the ground, but it's a massive amount of air, and it's actually pushed going out this direction. And so as you fly forward, then it's creating, pushing air out and creating a trailing vortex, um, which is going behind the drone and that's pulling your droplets outwards. So we need drift to get droplets out. Uh, too much is a bad thing, obviously. So this is a efficacy example. I got it from Tyler Flag, you know, Flag Service from Pennsylvania. So this is Harsbaugh. All right, nothing new here. Harsbaugh is a new thing from my neck of woods. All right, on treaty plants, it doesn't look any fancy, you know, just got hurt pretty bad. And then that's treated with well team of fungicide. It's really expensive, but it's good stuff. Full rate of seven ounces, you barely see disease lesion on it. That was spray with T40 at the two GPA. He used a narrower swath. You know what Taylor said? He didn't slow down, but he used a narrower swath. And then you can get a good efficacy out of it. And also, you can look at the non-treated check strip. This, this example comes from Wisconsin. You know, on treaty check, fungicide alone, fungicide with boron. Definitely healthy corn. It looks like tar spots about as good as glyphosate on corn. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely worth going to the agri-spray training. I had a, quite a few takeaways from it. Uh, things like droplet size and gallons per acre, why it matters, as well as route planning and things to look out for when you're setting up your field. But Tonight, Andrew's actually coming over to get, get the drone out, get it set up, and take it for its first test flight. So I'm, I'm going to be kind of trialing it here and there when I get the time, uh, taking it on test flights, maybe through the pasture, um, getting used to it, making sure that I'm familiar with the drone. And then uh, I should have some time to do our fungicide. So not totally sure how much of that we're gonna do yet, but my intention right now is to do at least do some trials um, over the next few weeks as we come into fungicide season. So I'll be sure to keep you guys posted 
um, when I start doing that, but that'll be in another video. That's where the computer is and everything? Yeah, that's your avionics board and your spray module and okay. all your inner stuff. So see, it tells us the battery needs to be updated. Okay. Update now. So like I'm resting this against my shims when I carry it. Okay. See how the props swing out? That's how I picked it up, yeah. That doesn't work very good. Okay. So when I move it, so I got that against me. Not able to take off the cruise, no security pass it. Good to go. So it's got safety checks built in, but just still double check it. Make sure none of your props are too loose. Like you don't have to open them, but you want to make sure they don't just freely swing. Like that's nice and stiff. So to take these pumps off, it's just a quarter turn. And then it comes out like that. Take a look at it. That's your impeller. So you can visually inspect it if you have issues. Make sure that gaskets or the O-ring there is fine. You gotta squeeze in on it to pull the whole thing out. So you can clean that if you need to. Make sure it's not gummed up. That's the easiest way to empty the tank at the end when you're cleaning it out, switching between products. So um, these are the other settings now. So um, when the task complete, I want to return home. I don't want to just hover in the field. Yep. Uh, if I lose signal loss, return to home, but finish the job. Huh. So I want to keep spraying. If I lose remote control signal, I don't care about that. But when it's done, I do want it to come back to home. Yep. Spotlights auto, that's fine. Waypoint added. Get rid of the stuff too. Let me see bigger map. Waypoint added. Okay, that's okay. That's what I expected right there. Yep. It was because you're doing the imagery. It has to fly past the boundary to get a picture of okay. it. So you can change your direction by double clicking any of the boundaries. Why does it say amount sprayed two and a half gallons? That's how much you're going to use. Oh. Okay. So if you're if you're so right now it's set to spray at if you click on it and you hit use. Current field. It's going to do three point two one gallon per accuracy. acre and use two point six three. If we change that. See how it's changing your amount sprayed? Yep, your total. Yep. So let's say we're doing... So you can click on it and type it in too if you want to. Yeah. So just type two, check, so there's your two gallon per acre. So flight speed, I always have maxed out. 32 feet per second. Height above the crops, normally gonna be 12 and a half. So your standard rule of thumb is your width that you're spraying needs to be double what your height is. So if you want to spray it 25 feet wide, you need to be 12 and a half feet above the crop. Okay. That's you good... can spray up to 32 feet wide. Okay. But it's not going to be. You might get more streaking. Yeah. Okay. Your pattern's not going to be the greatest. Okay. So. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. It's sensing us back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the radar is. That's neat. So I'll walk, stand back a little bit more. So I, I let off the stick. It's not going to take off yet. It's just, it's just running everything. So we're going to visually inspect it. So it's detecting those trees yep. right at the edge of the field. So you know it's there. You can change your um, radar indicator. So right now it's probably set to about 13 feet. If we go to our settings again, go to our sensors. So if we're on a steep hill, we set it to hill mode, um, but radar settings. So right now, if it, it's not gonna let you fly within 19.7 feet of anything. Okay. Radar sensitivity is high. You could change that around a little bit if you want. Um, you can change your braking distance, medium. Now it's not going to beep near as much if it's set to medium. Whatever you're comfortable with. Start out with high if the beeping annoys you, go to medium. Okay. But that was all in the radar settings, underneath sensor settings. Always keep an eye on your battery. Make sure that, you know, if, especially when you get started, if you're at 
with a, with without a payload at 20 percent you should be getting a home with a payload depending on how much payload you have you always got to think okay like if i'm half full right now if i got five gallons in there mm -hmm. by if i if i'm like 600 feet out i want to be thinking i start heading home at 30 percent especially when you're just getting started and okay. you're new to it you don't have an external battery in here yet so your remote control battery is 45 percent so okay. keep an eye on that so we can hit disable at any time that just disables this this current task not the job just the task okay it's going to start a new task as soon as you refill it and take off again so um, the task the task at hand is basically what program did when it takes off So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.